وأوحينا إلى أم موسى أن أرضعيه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالا وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to the series of the story of Nabi Musa and the Israelites, or Nabi Musa and Harun, and of course that translates to uh, Moses and Aaron, peace be upon them. We've learned so much about the treachery of the Israelites, that they were given Palestine as the promised land, but then they refused uh, to enter, they refused to obey God's law, time after time, and they were thus abandoned in the desert to wander for 40 years. And during this time, they still received water, they still received food from God, a drink from the heavens, and still they were not satisfied. So still, subhanAllah, they were deprived of that, they incurred the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they were finally discarded by God uh, for this treachery of these. We learn that in this time period, another incident happened in which a very strange occurrence was given as a response. The incident was that somebody was killed. So we learn in Surah Al-Baqarah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً Allah ta'ala says, and remember when Moses said to his people, indeed God commands you to slaughter a cow. Why did God command them to slaughter a cow? Because somebody was killed. And they wanted to know who the murderer was because they wanted to exact vengeance. So Nabi Musa salam, prayed to Allah and Allah commanded that they slaughter the cow. Now we don't learn about this until the end of the incident. Allah first tells us about the incident because more important than why they did it was how they responded to the solution that Allah Ta'ala provided them. Because that's the theme that's been going on throughout the mention of Bani Israel. Um, so again, when Allah highlights a story from a certain angle, we need to follow that angle to draw the lesson. Don't ask, um, okay, but what was behind this? Yes, you can ask that, but don't make that more important than the lesson Allah wants us to look at. So as I said, the, the less important uh, reason, and only less important but not unimportant, is that this is what they wanted to know. Now you can imagine, they come to Nabi Musa, they say, uh, we want to know who killed this man. I mean, Musa says, well, God says you must slaughter a cow. So they said, Qalu, they responded, Atatakhiduna huzua? Are you taking us for a joke? That's what they responded to him. He said, Allah told you you must do this. They responded, are you taking us for a joke? Qala a'udhu billahi an akuna min al-jahilin. He said, I mean, Musa responded, I take refuge in God that I be from among the ignorant ones. Now we tell people, <laughs> um, you know, Islam commands that you must do this. You must uh, cover your aura. Or Islam commands that you need to sacrifice an animal on Eid day. Or Islam commands that after Idda, a lady needs to, go, sorry, after Talaq, uh, or after the passing of a husband, a lady needs to wait in Idda. And then somebody responds by saying, uh, Are you mad? This is, this is a joke. This is ancient law. People do respond like that. We may not be guilty of exactly that, but some version of that. Think of a time when we heard a law of Allah and maybe felt as though the scholar who's giving you that law is being uh, being unnecessary. So there are lots of parables that we can draw. We move on. He's, Now they start, okay, fine, but make dua to your Lord, your Lord, they say. To clarify to us, what exactly must we do? What, what type of cow is this? Qala, Rabbi Musa responds after asking Allah, Innahu yaqul, verily he, God says, Innaha baqaratun, that it is a cow, a heifer, female cow. La faridun, wala bikrun, it's not old, nor is it very young. Awanun bayna dhalik, it's somewhat in between that, so it's middle aged. Tafalu ma tu'maru, now go and do what you've been commanded. So obviously now you can see from the word Baqara, which appeared twice in his ayat, that this is the incident after which this surah was named. That's interesting 
because it seems like such a, you know, like the story of the cow and then Surah Al-Baqarah, the chapter of the cow. And I also found it really interesting. But it makes sense when you notice that this story really exemplifies the treachery that we've been seeing of the Bani Israel. So it's one incident that exemplifies that. And then we see that that treachery that I'm speaking of appears throughout Surah Al-Baqarah. That a large portion of the surah speaks about Bani Israel, Sal Bani Israel, and then it mentions, you know, one thing after the next. So when we hear Surah Al-Baqarah, it's not that the entire surah, which is, you know, more than two ages of the Quran, is just about the story of the cow. No, it's one big theme within that surah, and that is the treachery of the Bani Israel and how they, they dealt with Nabi Musa salam. And that was, for, for me, that was a profound lesson. Because it's like that name represents an entire theme, but you need to you need to think a bit about it to get to that conclusion. So, are they going to now just go and slaughter the cow? Nope. It carries on. Okay, fine. Middle aged, but make dua to your Lord to clarify to us what color should the cow be. Salam. It's not enough that they were given the command and they're just going to say, okay, wa ta'ana. we want more detail. Qala innahu yaqulu innaha baqaratun safra'u faqi'u lawnuha. He said, Nabi Musa said, Allah said, indeed this cow must be yellowish, faqi'u lawnuha, with a uh, bright color, it must be bright, tasurru uh, nadirin, and it must be pleasing to the, to the onlookers. People who look at it will be pleased. That, that's the cow you're looking for. Are they happy? No. Okay, and ask your Lord to clarify to us what exactly it is. It's because you know all the cows they look the same to us, man. We really need to get some guidance here. وَإِنَّا إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَمُهْتَدُونَ And then they said, and indeed we, if Allah wills, we will be guided. And Alhamdulillah that they said that. So now Nabi Musa salam, asks Allah again. Mufassirun say they're lucky that they said insha'Allah in that instance because had they not said insha'Allah they would have been made, they would have been given such an instruction that would have been impossible for them that would have been a means of punishment. قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقْرَةٌ So Nabi Musa comes back with more information. He says it is a cow لَا ذَلُولٌ تُثِيرُ الْأَرْضِ that is not um, trained to plow the, the land. It's not a, tr- a cow that is going to be you know, working on, on the land. Nor is it a cow that is used to irrigate the, the uh, crops. It is a cow that is perfect. There's no la shiata fiha. There's no fault on this cow. It doesn't have any blemishes. Then they said, Now you have come with, with the truth. Allahu Akbar. فَذَبَحُوهَا And then they found a cow that matched that description. وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ But Allah says, but they almost did not. Meaning, if they had continued down this line, if they didn't say, inshallah, at that time, uh, as the Mufassirun mentioned, the, the exegetes, exegetes of the Qur'an, then Allah says, they almost couldn't do it because they became so difficult. So obviously we learn a number of things from this. But the one problematic lesson that some people pick up here is, don't ask questions. Because then things are going to become too difficult for you. And uh, just do whatever. This was true during the time of revelation. The Sahaba, they understood this lesson. So they asked the Prophet for guidance. If he gave them guidance, they followed the guidance. And they only asked when they absolutely needed. But now we have the guidance. So if we don't know how to do something, we must ask our scholars, we must learn, we must get the, the information and the detail that is already available. Because it's not going to be that Allah Ta'ala now changes the law and reveals the law because we've been difficult. No, that's not the lesson we're supposed to take here. It's very important. This is in the life of the Prophet during the time of revelation when things can change and things can uh, be made difficult for the people of the time and everyone thereafter. For us, the law is there, it's fixed. The law is not going to change, except in new matters, of course. And even then, it's, it's only going to be confined to what we already have. The Qur'an is finite in the sense of there's only so much text. And the Sunnah is finite in the sense that is, there are only so many ahadith. And it is from that that the scholars have to deduce their answers. But the details 
of it we must ask about like you can't just say you know what i don't know how to make salah but i know i must make salah so let me just do anything and then that's a salah and then fine i'm good no we have to ask uh you have to ask those who know if you don't know right i mean that's pretty logical and obvious as well so that's just an important fact because a lot of people draw from that lesson don't ask too many questions um it's saying uh, don't ask about things if it's revealed to you it will cause you difficulty that that has a particular context but it's not about like don't ask about the fiqh of islam or the understanding of islam that's not where it applies Allah alam yeah the reason why this was bad is because allah gave them a simple instruction they could have just followed that instruction because it, you know it would have been fulfilled in that way because of the way they were, the treachery and the way, you know, the way they speak to Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, the lack of faith, this led to them making things more and more difficult upon themselves and Allah knows best. Here we're going to now move on to very interesting elements within the life of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that I'm actually very excited for because we never get to discuss it all together as part of his life. For example, Nabi Musa meets Hidr. We may have covered this in Surah Kaf, but now we get to cover it as a particular incident in the flow of things. And we find uh, various other incidences like Nabi Musa and Qarun. Who's Qarun? What happened there? What do we need to know about that? So there's very, very exciting lessons coming up. But we leave that for the upcoming lessons, bismillah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.